Okay, this will be an update and some information on my 1UZ swapped 1991 Toyota pickup. Originally a 3.0, or 3 point slow as they say. Um, it's still a 5 speed. The computer has been relocated behind the glove box. I had to cut it down a bit and added that piece of plastic there. Makes it still functional. Uh, keep in mind that this truck is not done yet. I just got it basically driving reliably. Uh, engine is a 93 LS400 1UZ with approximately 400,000 kilometers on it. Still runs absolutely wonderful. Um, I have custom 90, or I guess it's more like a 45. Got that off eBay. I got this fitting right here off of uh, siliconeintakes.com. Allows me to plumb in the air idle control valve. It won't run without this, or it won't be happy at least. Um, SC400 airbox fits pretty much perfectly in here. I had to cut all the mounting ears off of it and I have a little bracket that holds on to the airflow meter here and it's sturdy enough. Uh, coils mounted or cold igniter mounted over here in factory holes. Didn't have to do anything with the wiring there. Just kind of moved it all over. Um, this is to feed the front automatic disconnecting differential. That still works. Need to get some some more vacuum line and route this a little bit more appropriately. Uh, see the loom there, all taped up, protected. Back there too. Uh, ear hoses all connected. Those were a bit fun to actually prevent leaking. That one kept wanting to leak on me, but we got it now. Um, See, it's pretty tight down there. I was having an issue with the motor rocking forward under torque and coming in contact with the fan right down there. So I have uh, put grade 8 bolts through the motor mounts now, and that seems to be doing the trick. Uh, relocated the battery on this side, made a little tray for it. Kind of see it there. We ran all the uh, main power and grounds with two gauge. I know should have gone bigger, but that was uh, easily accessible for me. I got the, um, the radiator, shroud, the fan, all from Northwest Toys. I actually got their motor mounts as well, their conversion mounts. Better angle here of them. See, they just bolt to factory 3 liter mount. Uh, it puts the engine a little bit far forward for my liking. If I were to do it again, I would probably make my own mounts and shift the motor back about an inch. Would make the, uh, the cooling system much easier to deal with. As you can see, I have to finish this off, but I had to basically cut everything out and uh, cut out my latch so now I need to run hood pins which is a little unfortunate the bumper is not done yet I have to finish welding some new bracketry on here but this is just to mock it up with the strap there um, exhaust is 2000 to 2004 Tundra headers um, I believe the brand is Manzo uh, I had a friend of mine modify the first runner here. You can see the welds. This whole piece had to be replaced to clear the steering shaft. You see how I had to do a little bit of loving with the hammer just to clear this part of the shaft. Um, from right about there, all the way to there is basically custom. You blanked off that O2 sensor port which if you had a solid axle you'd be able to run the O2 sensor there but with the IFS it would work so he added a new one up on the top for me um, converted the uh, headers to run V-band flanges 
was so I didn't have to worry about gaskets. The system is uh, two and a quarter from the headers. You can see I got some flex joints in there just in case. I'm going to show you this side. Bring this side comes down. We've got the fuel line is wrapped. We'll run through this kind of like a heat shielding material. I just kind of draped it over it. It's supposed to keep it nice and cool. Um, I've wrapped the pipes where they're close to the brake lines and seems to be doing the trick. Exhaust comes down around underneath. That'll focus. Probably not. Uh, straight back. And it goes up to a MegaFlow muffler. Get up here. Let's see it through here. There we go. MegaFlow, straight through muffler. Up, right back, and straight out. I have to adjust this slightly as it's just slightly tucked, ugh, touching the box. But I wanted to keep it up nice and high. I was hoping that uh, this will hit for that so it'll be close but so I might reroute that and bring it out over here but I have to uh, between the the leaf spring and the frame but I'm going to be converting to 63 inch Chevy leaf springs so I didn't want to get in the way when uh, it was time to do that so I guess I'll kind of take a look at that at a later date um, what else for the drive line, I used a one and a half. Uh, I'm actually going to be putting a one and a quarter inch spacer in there instead. And the drive shaft itself is an 89 to 95 three liter automatic pickup drive shaft. So it's just a little bit shorter, but uh, actually allows it to be fully bolted in. No modifying really. I might go to a one piece eventually, but this was, I think this whole combo, oops, where am I, there I am, was roughly $100, including that spacer, so, and this this bearing was quite new, um, you can see I moved the bearing up onto the top of the support because I had to lift the transmission up to match the engine, you can see uh, I just cut a chunk out of a, another, uh, cross member and welded it onto top of this one. Again, I'll probably go out and uh, get some flat metal and make myself a new cross member, but this was just to get everything working. Make sure I didn't have any other issues. Uh, what else? deleted the EGR. I used the wet stream kit. As most people say, it's not really worth the money, but they do offer quite a bit of information for free, so I guess I'm contributing there. Or whatever. Uh, fuel line. This again is kind of has this heat uh, protective material in there. Just have it kind of tucked in the back. I bet made at a local place. Probably going to change that eventually to a stainless braided line, but unfortunately, if you're in Canada, metric lines are not easy to have made, which is just bizarre. But, anyways, uh, yeah. Got a little fuse box here for our auxiliary stuff, a little bank of relays. Um, oh, the bell housing kit is a KS Racing, uh, I guess it wasn't really a kit, it was just the bell housing and the pilot bushing that came with that. I got that uh, from a local guy who was going to do the swap but then decided not to, so I got that for a pretty good price. Um, that allowed me to obviously retain the 5-speed, factory 5-speed R150. Custom 
shift knob, I guess. Uh, other than that, I basically just did simple maintenance on the engine before I put it in. Did a tie-in belt and water pump service, the spark plugs, did the valve cover gaskets. Um, I did not pull the intake or even touch the starter. Didn't even feel like it, so I guess we'll see how long uh, that lasts. Oh, uh, power steering was actually really easy to hook up. I was able to use the factory 3 liter lines. I only had to slightly modify the high pressure side, which I don't think, yeah, I won't be able to show you anyways. Basically the gasket on the, or the copper gasket, whatever you want to call that, that bolts onto here, it has a little tab on it. I had to bend it flat so then I could uh, bolt this all together. This it kind of helps it locate itself so it doesn't twist around, but I haven't been having any issues. Um, I had some initial leaks, but so far um, it's working okay. Um, to clear the steering shaft with IFS, I had to remove that nubbin right there for the... Um, steering stabilizer you can see it would bolt right in that little bracket there which would hit the oil pan so I will be getting an aftermarket one to suit but that's pretty straightforward um, if I remember I will post the part or the part number for that um, you can see I'm still missing the inspection plate I'm told that a uh, an inspection plate off of a 2000 to 2004 Tundra will fit. Uh, again, once I get that sorted, I'll probably post a part number or something. Um, other than that, I think that's basically it. Battery connections are not tight at all right now, just for testing purposes. So, fire it up. Here, That's a wonderful sound. Oops. There we go. Um, I did calibrate the tack. There's basically a screw right back there. Actually, it might be over here. In any case, I took the cluster slightly apart, and I was actually I didn't have to take the face of it off, I could reach in with a screwdriver from the side, a little terminal driver, and adjust it. And I just basically hooked up a tack into the output right there, and then just had it resting up here on the hood, and then I just matched it. It's still a little bit off, it actually reads a bit high, because under, uh, well at full red line bouncing up the limiter, it's indicating about 7500 RPM, which if anyone knows when you Zeds, no, that's not true. It should be around 65, but again, it's not a really big issue. Um, I have a slight exhaust leak on this manifold up here, but let's tighten those up later. Let's see. Kind of here, it's nice. Nice and quiet at idle. Let's see if I can kind of prop you guys up here. Oops. Here we go. We'll give her a couple revs. smoke coming out but I haven't really run this thing for a while it's just been basically started and stopped after five minutes of running or so for the last year while I've been dicking around getting it finished but um, I got the engine for free so I don't really care if it blooms oil but it's fast so uh, I guess if anyone has any questions um, feel free to post it and I'll try to answer them okay thanks